characters in extreme situations, if you really take on the reality of that world, it's, it's uh, you know, the world is over as you know it. How are you going to survive? And it makes perfect sense. All the characters make perfect sense. And uh, it's really, a, they build a complete world for you there. So it's just very easy to be that character in that world. Jeffrey DeMunn, who played Dale, was kind of the moral compass of the show while he was there. And after his demise, Herschel evolved into the moral compass of the show, who kind of uh, indicated through his actions, his, his, his behavior as much as anything else, probably the right way to go. The show is, is now going in a, uh, in a more dark direction than it was. It, it, uh, there was always a pullback position, I think, because of the moral compasses in the show. But now it seems to be going to a darker place. How long that will happen, I don't know. I would assume that at some time you have to have you know, more, more, uh, more light. But, but I, I love the show. I love what the actors are doing. It's uh, it's interesting. I, but I don't know that anyone involved with the show thought that it would become as popular as it has become. It's crazy. I mean, shows don't become that popular. So it must be speaking to a lot of people. The issues that it's dealing with must be speaking to a lot of people. And, addressing the issues that they may have either consciously or subconsciously. So it, it's, uh, it's, it's real interesting to be a part of it. I don't judge the characters. 
I just see them as human beings with challenges that they have to face. And so in that sense, I authenticate that experience by not creating a caricature or a, an idea of someone. I, I see a living, breathing person that has feelings and is trying their best to work through a situation that makes sense to them. From their point of view, they're not a bad guy. They're just simply dealing with a situation and moving through it. You know? So.
magst. Mhm. Wenn du zum Beispiel jetzt noch mit ein bisschen anderen Pulver mit dran gehst oder, so, oder zum Beispiel Haus jetzt machst du ja immer Cornflakes mit dran, dann kannst du es mit Haarspray zum Beispiel auch mit Und es das schmeckt Handmodel. lecker. <lacht> Abschrecken. So, Space Crew, exklusives Pimping, Face Pimping bei Blurt, unsere Freunde aus Ingolstadt. Kommen wir Bayern halt zusammen, gell? Ja, komm. Der Horn ist der Horn, <lacht> auch in Oberhausen. Das wird jetzt schon selber wird es zu Blut, ne? Genau. Und halt ja, ja. In, in Verbindung mit Wasser ja, oder ja. jeder anderen Flüssigkeit, die da ist. Oh, oh, oh. <lacht> 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 Zeug ist, es geht nie wieder weg. <lacht> Permanent weg. Ja. Will, will ich einen Verband oder ist das gut so? Ja, lass deine Luft trocknen. Du das doch. Sag ich mal nochmal. Bin ich hübsch? Wunderhübsch. <lacht> Chucky's hair. 
Meanwhile, for, for like the human beings, we got like one or two takes and they're like, all right, all right, we gotta move on, we gotta move on. But I would say that working in Insidious was wonderful because um, I personally like horror films where there's the element of surprise, a little bit of the paranormal, um, something that could maybe be a little more realistic as opposed to a two-footed, redheaded asshole of a doll that comes to life killing people. So that's, that's my opinion. <laughs> Ich erzähle euch alles, was ich weiß. Hals Maul denn! Schnauze to face! Wir sind uns heute auch mal wieder verdammt uneins miteinander. Die penetrante Weigerung der Fledermaus, mit dem Leben abzuschließen. Hat uns gerade für den Wahnsinn! Wir wollen Batman! Verquetscht, zermalmt, zerbrochen, in einem Wort! Tod! Und wenn es nun mal nicht anders geht, holen wir uns die Hilfe der Bürger des liebreizenden Gottes. <lacht> Einer von euch wird schon wissen, wer Batman ist. Einer von euch aufgeblasen, ja, aber dann könnte sogar Batman sein. This is still the Halloween story. So, like I said, my agent said I had, all she knew was just because he just played some psycho. Also, the agent had said, or the agent had said, alles was er zu tun ist, ein guten Psycho zu spielen. Because of the process of the movie, I signed the contract, and I was in. Er hat halt den Vertrag unterschreiben, und das war das für ihn gewesen. So I go to the house on my set day, and the girl comes up to me with my wardrobe. So, er war dann am Set gewesen und eine Frau kam mit, seiner, mit seinem Kostüm. She has the coveralls over her arm, she's holding the army boots. Also, die hatte den Overall und Armeestiefel. And she's got a mask and a jar of Vaseline in her hand. Und die hatte diese Maske und einen großen Eimer mit Vaseline dabei gehabt. So, I said, I said, I pointed at the mask and I go, what's that for? Er hat auf die Maske gezeigt und sagt, was, ist, was soll das denn da? She goes, you gotta wear it. Du hast das zu tragen. So I said, I thought it was in a porno now. Und er dachte, was ist das jetzt ein Porno, den die hier dreht? I said, what's the jar of Vaseline for? She goes, you have a lot of hair and you want to put that in your hair so when you take the mask off, it doesn't yank your hair out. Also Porno wegen der Vaseline, er sagt, was soll ich denn damit? Und weil er damals noch mehr Haare hatte als jetzt, sollte er sich damit einschmieren, damit er die Maske halt aufsetzen kann. I was already fucked because I signed the contract, so I did the fucking movie. Oh, der war sowieso schon angepisst, weil er diesen Vertrag unterschrieben hat. Und jetzt sollte er auch noch so eine Scheiße machen. I swear to God. Der schwört zu Gott. Also sein erster Horrorfilm, da war er sieben, haben seine vier Schwestern eben mitgenommen und das war halt dieser besagte Halloween-Teil. What bitches! <lacht> Welche äh, guten Bitch. Schwestern ja noch hat. <lacht> Er war schon sieben, also kann er es ja gucken. 
He scared the Scheiser out of me. Er hat ihm ganz schön Angst gemacht. If there's no him, wenn es ihn nicht gäbe, there's no Randy. Dann würde es auch keinen Randy geben. Also großen Applaus für Tony. Das ist halt das Gute, man weiß vorher nie, was rauskommt. Die waren beide als Low Budgets angedacht und jetzt sind es richtige Klassiker geworden. Ja. sein. Alles, was man irgendwie recherchieren konnte, ist drin. Wann kommt es raus? Ja, es sollte eigentlich heute hier schon liegen, ne? aber die Druckerei hat es halt irgendwie nicht hingekriegt und deswegen ist es dann jetzt irgendwie den nächsten Tag. Was, ein mein, mein Flieger passt nicht. <lacht> Ganz so stocksauber im Fernseher. Hast du drei Regale, wo die alle drin sind, wo sie oben drüber steht, sie dreht durch. Frau Michael J. Fox muss ich ja jetzt auch noch holen zu Back to the Future, habe ich bei euch ja auch gesehen. Muss mir auch noch kaufen. Sie ist richtig sauer, weil im Mund ist aber schon nur mein Zeug. Aber es ist der Wahnsinn. Sascha, ja. zeigst du mir der Kamera, ja? Da siehst du, was sie geht. Also wenn es so beide gehen, muss ich auch sehen, Platz Space. Das nenne ich Teamwork. Space und Sascha, perfekt, ohne Witz.
Okay, here's the deal. First of all, Tony Scott, right? He's up there somewhere now looking down. He, he was, that was the very first big movie I ever did. It was 1992. Uh, I'll, I'll never forget meeting Bruce Willis. And uh, you guys have to understand something. I was a really young actor. I'd done all this theater. Uh, I was the youngest Macbeth ever at Stratford. I was 26. Directed by John Neville, I went right to Broadway. I did Stanley Clark and Stanley Kowalski to speak on their desire on Broadway for five months. Warner Brothers just thought, wow, who's this kid? Uh, I did three movies in a row for Warner Brothers. First one was with Tony Scott. Tony, when I, when I met him, he was just the greatest cigar, pink hat, coolest dude. And the very first day, Bruce Willis, I'll never forget, nothing scares me, nothing, except for dolls, right? But I remember Bruce coming in on set, and he was really cool. He shook my hand. He wasn't very, he wasn't friendly. He wasn't anti. He was just a star, you know. And I uh, started doing that big scene you're talking about. And it took two days to film, and on the second day, it was time for me to die. And um, Bruce comes up and goes, "Okay, so you know, I'm going to punch him, and Kim, he'll fall into the water, and you know, he'll fucking die." And I. I, that's not how I wanted to die. I didn't see it that way. So I went up to Tony and I said, Tony, brother, you know, like, can I just try? And Tony goes, mate, you can do whatever you want. You're fucking great, mate. You can do whatever you want. We're gonna try one for you, one for you, whatever you want. So he goes up to Bruce and tells him, and Bruce goes, okay. That scene, I'm not kidding. We filmed it once with two cameras. He punched my nose. And I fell down like a little 12 year old kid, right on my ass, flop. And it was like, that's pretty funny. So it, it just stayed just that way. And so I think Willis had a lot of respect for me from that moment on. He's a good buddy of mine now.